Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Arch Linux with the help of the Arch Linux GUI installer. Arch Linux GUI is a fast offline graphical installer for vanilla Arch Linux. For those of you who are new to the channel and to the project in general, I've made a video regarding the project link to which is in the description. And please feel free to also visit the project website. Again, I'll put all of the relevant links in the description. So you can download all the 12 editions that I have to offer either from SourceForge or OSDN. And once you have downloaded your edition of choice, uh, you need to make a bootable USB. So for that, you will require a USB device which is of minimum 8 GB in size. And you want to back up all of the data that is in that USB device because that will be subsequently wiped off. And if you are already on a Linux distribution, then you can use dd command to make your bootable USB. I've made a video on that already. Again, link will be in the description. And if you are on Windows, you can either use Balina Etcher or Rufus in DD mode. Again, relevant videos will be linked in the description. So now that you have your bootable USB, you want to plug it in in your computer or keep it plugged in uh, if you are doing this on that particular machine as, as it is. And you want to restart your computer and press one of the function keys shown on the screen that matches with your laptop or your motherboard manufacturer and enter into your boot menu. So once you are in your boot menu, you want to select your USB device brand. In my case, it's HP. And once you have done that, uh, you will be greeted by a splash screen and then you will see two options. Uh, the first option will be free and open source GPU drivers. Second will be proprietary NVIDIA drivers. So the first option is for those of you who have Intel or AMD integrated GPUs and uh, since open source drivers are available for these iGPUs, that's the first option you want to select, press enter. This is also for those of you who are testing out this on virtual machine. For those of you who have an NVIDIA GPU which will require a proprietary NVIDIA driver, you have to use your arrow key to move to the second option and then press enter. Either ways, you will be booting up into your live environment. So once you boot up in your desktop environment of choice, the first thing you want to do is search for the installer. So you can open the app menu or program launcher and search for install Arch Linux. And on certain editions such as XFCE Pure, which lack a program launcher like this one, you can open your app menu and search, go to system and then you can find the installer there. So just go ahead and click on install Arch Linux and you want to select the language in which you will be installing Arch Linux. And right now it's going to scan for all of your drives in the system as well partitions on it. Once that's done, you can go ahead and click on next and then select your time zone. So for me, it's automatically detected because I've connected to internet. If you're not connected to internet, you're doing this offline, which is completely fine. You can go ahead and click on your time zone of your choice. Uh, and once you've uh, selected your correct time zone, click on next, select your keyboard layout, which is right and go ahead and click on next. You can also go ahead and type here to test your keyboard. And then we are presented by two options, it is disk and manual partitioning. Before we take a look at both of these options, let's go ahead and take a look at storage device. Select storage device. This is really, really important, especially for computers which have more than one hard disk or more than one SSD is installed. If you have only one disk or one drive installed on a computer, this is something that you can ignore. Uh, but in this case, I have one NVMe SSD known as slash dev slash NVMe 0 and 1 and one hard disk, traditional hard disk installed. So I'm going to be doing this on the NVMe SSD. One thing you want to note regarding the nomenclature is that if you have an M.2 NVMe SSD, uh, whether you have one or two, it will be something like slash dev slash NVMe 0 and 1 and 2. Uh, and if you have hard disk or a SATA SSD, then it's going to be slash dev slash SDA, SDB, SDC. So I have that clear right now. So we can go ahead and select the drive on which we are going to be doing this. And then the first option that we see here is it is disk and you can see that what it's going to be doing is basically creating a 100 MB EFI system partition and then a root partition only. And the problem with this is basically it's going to be creating a root, uh, the home partition inside the root partition. So this is something that I do not want and we do not want in an ideal case. Why is that? I will tell you once the partitioning is done. Uh, so if you're just trying this on VirtualBox, you can go with the first option, select your file system and then uh, select your swap, no swap that's pretty obvious. Now I'm going to click on manual partitioning because I'm assuming most of you are going to be doing this for a daily driver setup. So we can go ahead and click on next. And what we want to do is once this is uh, done scanning all of the storage devices, 
is go ahead and click on new partition table and since this is a UEFI slash GPT setup we want to make sure GUID partition table is selected click on OK and now again uh, under the storage device we want to make sure that the drive on which we want to uh, install Arch Linux is selected uh, in my case the SSD is selected now I can go ahead and click on free space and now we'll start creating partitions. So the first mandatory partition that I have to create is the EFI system partition uh, on which Grub the bootloader will reside. So I would recommend a minimum of 300 MB bytes, but just to show you, I'm going to allocate 500 and then the file system is going to be FAT32. The mount point is going to be slash boot slash EFI and under the flags, we want to select the boot flag and click on OK. The next mandatory partition that we are going to be creating is the root file uh, root partition which will have the Linux file system on it. So we're going to click on create and ideally I would recommend a minimum of 50 gigabytes but since I have a lot of sp free space here I can just go ahead and allocate just to show you guys 200 gigabytes so 204800 this is basically 200 into 1024 mebibytes so this uh, since we, are, we have to type uh, the size in mebibytes this is so any size that you are uh, going to put here, let's say 50, which is the minimum. So 50 into 1024. The file system is going to be ext4. You can go ahead and select anything else. You can have the option to encrypt. This is something that we'll look at uh, in another video. And the mount point is going to be root, which is just one slash. The flags, we are going to go ahead and scroll down and click on the root flag, click on OK. Now we are going to create the home partition. That's the reason why we did manual partitioning. And I'm just going to click on create and create the home partition. Before we do that, I want to talk about swap partition. So swap basically is your virtual memory. And this was really necessary on older system which had like one gig, two gig RAM. Uh, and then usually some applications would just eat up all of the RAM. So you could borrow, uh, uh, borrow memory basically from your persistent storage. But in today's case, most of the computers have 8 gigs, 16 gigs of RAM. This particular computer has 16 gigs of RAM. So this is not mandatory uh, in my case and in probably, in probably also your case. But if you are doing this on a really, really old computer and like you have, let's say, 4 gigs of RAM installed, what you can do is click on Create and you want to allocate as much RAM, uh, as much space that is equivalent to the physical RAM installed. So let's say you have... 4 gigs of RAM, you can type in 4096, which is 4 into 1024. The file system is going to be Linux swap, and you can move this to the end of the space and click on OK. So like I said, I'm not going to be creating swap because I have 16 gigs of RAM installed on this computer. So I'm going to use all of the remaining 265.3 gigabytes to create the home partition. So I'm going to use all of this space. The file system is going to be ext4. The mount point is just going to be slash home and pretty much it, no flags. So why did we create the home partition outside the root partition? We could just have done the automatic partitioning, right? The thing is that home partition is like your D drive in Windows. Um, it stores all of your personal data and not only your personal data, but also your settings. So your wallpapers, themes, icons, all of these things are in your home directory, in your home partition. So in an event where you mess up your root partition or your boot partition, all you have to do is just go ahead and reinstall that particular messed up partition and your not only your data but also your system settings will be intact. So that's the reason why we are going to be creating the home partition outside of the root partition. And just to recap, we created a 500 MB byte uh, EFI system partition which will have the bootloader. Without this, the system will not boot. We have a 200 gig uh, root partition which will have the Linux file system and then we are creating uh, a 265 or whatever space is left for the home partition uh, that will contain all of our personal data as well as settings. So now that we have uh, all, of our, all of our partitions set, we can go ahead and click on next and I can type in my name here which I want to display on the login screen and this is going to be my username and this is going to be my computer name and where is this exactly going to be shown? Let me open a terminal window to show you. So currently on this live system, live user is the username and Arch Linux GUI is the computer name. So uh, since I've said daemon killer and test, it will be something like daemon killer at test. All right, so that is username and computer name. You can go ahead and set a password for this daemon killer user. And you can also go ahead and set up a password for the root user. So whenever you do something with sudo, whether it's installing, uninstalling applications or modifying, uh, uh, modifying files on your root file system, you're going to be using this password. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to set the same password that I set for daemon killer user for the root account as well. 
So now that is done, you can go ahead and click on next and click on install and let the installer install Arch Linux for you. This is going to take somewhere around uh, five to 10 minutes, depending on whether you're doing this on an SSD or a hard disk. And I'll be back when this is done. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are done with installing Arch Linux. You can go ahead and test the system out or you can just go ahead and click on restart now and click on done. So this is basically how we install Arch Linux with the help of the Arch Linux GUI installer in 2022. If you like the video, please do subscribe and please go ahead and visit the website to learn more about the project. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.